with a thousand dollar decks in the game and product coming out every couple of months, I think it's time to ask the age old question. Is Yu-Gi-Oh! dying? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the softiest, balliest, most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living, dying boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. I hope you all have been enjoying this week of content as I'm pre recording all this before I leave for basically a week to go deal with all my Von Hippolindau cancer stuff. For those of y'all who keep up with the channel, you know about all that. So, hope to be back in town, I don't know, by Friday, whenever you're seeing this video. I don't know. I've got the whole schedule lined up ready to go. Anyway, this is my last video, so I need to get this on out the door so I can edit everything for you. <laughs> so, is Yu Gi Oh dying? I've been seeing some people talking about this with. You know, Fire King basically being a thousand dollars. It's a little bit cheaper now because of the fact that it was revealed, at least the day we recording this video, the twenty sixth of January, um, that Promethean Princess and Populous were both ultras. So between Bonfire being an ultra, that I don't know what the price is because future me doesn't know, right? Because this is probably like by the time you see this, it's like February. So who knows what the price is? Um, but. With both of them being ultra, it's the deck is still probably like eight hundred dollars. Let's be honest, um, maybe a little bit more. But with it, with them being ultras, at least now you have a decent, better chance of pulling them. More of a decent chance than compared if they were like secrets. If they were secrets. Th then Fire Kings is easily a one thousand dollar deck, bar none. But I think the biggest issue right now is the fact that we are getting product. If you think about it, core sets like every two months. It used to be every four months. Now, we're getting Phantom Nightmare, February. We get Legacy of Destruction, like, two months after that. The next set after Legacy of Destruction is Infinite Forbidden, which we know nothing about right now. And so, like, what? Do you mean to tell me that, like, what? We're in January, almost February now? So, like, what? In four months, we're going to have three more core sets? Like, that's insane. And... You know, if you were to do even like three to four months a piece, at least you give the set time to breathe. And if they did it like every four months consistently and they dropped a ban list at that point, you still get a new ban list like at least, what is that, three to four times a year, which is roughly what Konami does. And so that's not even mentioning side, three, two, one. That's not even mentioning side sets either. Jesus Christ, I forgot about that. But the point that I'm making by saying all this is that I think that as long as there continues to be product releasing and as long as there continues to be interest in the game, I don't think the game will ever truly die, right? But when you do have these expensive decks, when you do have these sets that, I wouldn't say blow out the market, but it's hard to find another word for it, like Rarity Collection. A lot of people like Rarity Collection. For some reason, there were people that really didn't like it. I don't know why, um, because the set was really, really good. Like, you basically got four reprints of Talents, you got four reprints of Ash, you got four reprints of Call By, you know, in different rarities. And then you, if you wanted the higher rarities, then you had to pay out that dollar in order to do so. But I feel like I've seen this question be asked so often that, like, I'm just numb to it now. Because it's like, if the game wanted to die, honestly, I think it would have happened back in like teledad format when like the whole fallout between upper deck and konami was going on and there weren't events for months because konami just didn't handle any of that they gave upper deck the reins the keys to the kingdom if you will and said hey pimp go handle this and upper deck was like no nah, we're gonna go print fake cards sugar boo bear and then they had to go to court and so now we've got the whole ycs stuff we've got a nationals now back after covid and all that and so you have options available to you to play the game. You know, whether it's the Time Wizard formats, whether you want to play GOAT, whether you want to play Edison, whether you want to play a budget deck and still try and be competitive, you have these options available to you. Is everybody going to be able to sit down and pay close to $1,000 for a fully fleshed out non-budget Fire King deck? No, it's not going to happen. And I guarantee you, we're going to see decks besides Fire King and Rescue Ace and Labyrinth to a lesser extent topping events because of the fact that people just don't have the money for cards and 
in reality, it's a hobby. You know, you have to choose how much money and time you want to sink into it. Me, when I need my invite, which I don't right now, so I'm sitting back here with the biggest cheesy smile in the world because I don't have to worry about a damn thing with any of this format. You know, I can sit back and just kind of watch it from afar and see, you know, the shenanigans that play out. But, like, if I need my invite, if I'm on that grind, I'm committing at least four to five hours a day testing. Like, instead of me playing Call of Duty, instead of me just chilling out watching YouTube videos, I'm going to be playtesting on EDO Pro. I'm not really going to be streaming. If I'm making videos, it's to talk about, you know, the meta at large. Like, you can go back and watch my videos and see what I've been talking about. And I hold myself to a high standard. I'm not going to be wasting my time playing against a Table 500 deck. You know, I'm going to tap their ass in EDO Pro and move on and say meta only and, you know, get my testing in. And, you know, some players are like that. Some are like, well, I want to see how far my Dark World adventure electric boogaloo deck can get me and it's like okay cool you know have fun with your zero and five record but like people have fun doing that and that's okay and so i feel like the people that say oh the game is dying the game sucks blah 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 i feel like that these are the same people that have been saying the game's been fucking dying for years like keep in mind i've been playing this game competitively for 16 years right i have seen time and time and time again where people have said the game is dying back when synchros came out people said the game is dying when exceeds came out the game is dying synchros were the best and you know what happened when pendulums came out <clears throat> can you make a guess i bet you can sugar boo bear the game is dying exceeds and synchros were the best era Blech. it's like <laughs> we're seeing it again it's like the game's going to be here a year from now. There's no sign of it stopping unless all of a sudden, like, Konami just craps on the floor and says, look, we're done making this. We're going to go back to making Metal Gear Solid games. Yeah, like, that's going to fucking happen. They just put out, like, a very mid, like, Master Collection. And we still don't even have Master Collection Volume 2, although I kind of want to get it. But not for $60. No, absolutely not. But, like, do you think Konami's going to go back to making video games? No. Like, are pachinko machines paying the bills? Fuck no. Like... Yu-Gi-Oh is their bread and butter, like, honestly. Like, if you look at everything that Konami, like, has their eggs in, like, what do they have besides Yu-Gi-Oh? Pachinko machines in Japan, okay, because that's popular. What are they doing in the gaming sphere? Besides Master Shits, what are they putting out? Oh, they put out a Metal Gear Solid Master Collection. Cool. It took them whole five minutes to put together, and they still have number two coming out, and they're probably just testing it for bugs. It's probably done by now. So, like... What else is Konami really known for? It's really just Yu-Gi-Oh. So, do you think that they're going to let their one cash cow die? No, thank you. They're going to do everything that they can to milk money. I mean, just look at the look at the platinum blue eyes that they sold for a thousand. Then they turn around, you could tell that they got greedy. They're trying to sell the Dark Magician for fourteen hundred dollars. Like, no, absolutely not. But. They see the successes of things and the things that people enjoyed, like the Rarity Collection. They're already coming out with Rarity Collection too, because they saw it was popular. I don't think it's going to be as good as Rarity Collection 1, at least with what they've announced so far. But, hey, Shiny Draw and Lot Bird's hard to come by unless you want to pay like $200 for an Ultimate Rare. So, all of this to say, you have other ways to play the game. Many more options available to you than there were years ago. I mean, I remember, God, the only ways that you could play online Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day... Before YVD, I wasn't around in the days of YVD, um, was Dual, God, I almost forgot the name, Dueling Network before that got shut down. And outside of Dueling Network, you had the World Championship games that they don't make anymore that they should. I mean, they we still don't have an official way to, to, to play Turbo Duels. And like, that would be such a money maker and they're just leaving all that money on the table. But okay, you do you, Sugar Boo Bear. God forbid they let you play card games on motorcycles. <laughs> but... Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I think the game is doing fine. I, th I think, actually, the game is doing very great. We're in a diverse format. Post-Fandom Nightmare, it's still going to be kind of diverse. It's just, instead of the deck pool being this big, it's going to be this big. And you're going to have, like, maybe six to seven decks to choose from instead of, like, ten plus. And that's okay, because it's still diverse. You still have options available to you. I'm not saying it's a good thing that the, that decks are expensive. I'm just saying, wait for the reprints. Wait for a balance. Because look at the people. Look at the smooth brains that spent $130 on pre-sale for bonfires. And now what is it? Last I checked, it was 80 Future me, of course, doesn't know because this is going up like near the end of the month or even next month. Who knows what they're at at that point? Yeah. We, we lucked out. And you lucked out because you didn't spend that money because you watch your boy. And I'd be telling you, that's a damn shame you wasted that money. Guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.